Hi there, it's Sam from poodles.co.uk. Thank you very much for joining me today. Today's project is this one. I'm revisiting a project that I first made in 2015, January 2015. So, you know, we're coming up close on six years ago. And the last time I made it was uh, four years ago in 2016. So I thought, time to bring that little project back out again. And it's a lovely little project. This is a nice one to have on hand. I don't know, you could make favours, you could make these as table favours because it's not holding a great amount. It's two inches at the bottom, five centimetres across. It's not massive, but you could put some little sweets or treats in there as table favours. You could have them for um, Treat Friday if you do that in your in your house. We haven't done that for ages. Well, we have. I do it every week with my family. I just haven't put a Treat Friday project on video for ages. I might have to do that. I might have to bring that back into videos. Anyway, but yeah, you could put something little in here. You could put some small pieces of jewellery in. I don't know. It's just a darling, charming little box. And I'm making it with Jar of Flowers, which is a lovely stamp set. And actually, when I bought the Flowers for Every Season suite, I thought I'd use this a lot more than I have. I've actually used the sunflower lots and lots and lots. So I'm kind of, I'm not forcing myself to to use it because, you know, I don't force myself to do anything. Um, I'm just encouraging myself to use it. So that's random stamped all over. And it's only the front part that I've picked out in Wink of Stella. The rest isn't, I think you can possibly see the difference. Um, and so this was purple posy cardstock with gorgeous grape over the top and I'm going this time round with Blushing Bride and Magenta Madness and I don't know whether I'm going to keep the same flowers or use different ones. I used these ones last time. Um, I haven't used the others. I haven't used any of the others. <gasps> That's outrageous. I'm going to use this one which is those ones there. Oh there we go. Right, so you have to stamp first, stamp before you stamp before you cut and score them, everything. And it is completely random where you stamp and where you get your images. Oh. Okay, apparently I haven't used Magenta Madness for a while either. <laughs> I just put it on my block completely upside down. <laughs> For goodness sake, we have the emergency spare side. Let me just clean up that. <laughs> Oops. Should we try that again? I did think that was sticking a bit much. There we go. Much better image. <laughs> For goodness sake. So, yeah, randomly stamping all over. I'm not too fussed whether my flowers are going to be the right way up or not the right way up because that would be the wrong way up. I'm just stamping all over. There we go. Right. <laughs> I can't believe I did that. Dear me. I'm going to clean that one up while I'm here. Do you own a stamping scrub? Has everybody got one? Love a stamping scrub. Mine's just here. Actually, I have four. One off, one off. One on, one off, and one in the wash. Yeah, everybody knows that one. So this is a stamping scrub. So you've got, it folds in half, it's hinged. You've got one side that has got a some little raindrops there, and the other side has got a sunflower. So you spritz your stamping mist on here. And then you clean up your stamps and obviously I've just put my stamp away. So you scrub, 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 dry, 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 good to go. Worth every single penny. Marvellous. Did I tell you the dimensions of this piece of cardstock? Quite possibly not. Four, um, it's eight and a quarter inches by four inches, which is 21 by 10 centimetres. But if you work in eight and a half by 11, make yours eight and a half, not eight and a quarter. But it does mean... Wherever you are, you can get two of these from a single sheet of cardstock. Love a frugal project. Right, where's my scoring tool? Okay, we're going to score the short side first. And I'm going to score it at two inches, five centimetres, straight down the middle. On the long side, I'm going to score it fully at two, four, six and eight, which is five, ten, fifteen and twenty. And that's why I'm saying if you work in eight and a half inch paper, 
go for it that way. You leave it at eight and a half, you've got a little bit of extra room. Okay, so I've scored fully at two, four, six and eight. And I'm now going to mark it just at the top where I can't see. One, three, five and seven, which in metric is two and a half, seven and a half, 12 and a half and 17 and a half. And then without being able to see because of my beautiful stamping, I'm going to score a diagonal line from there to there and there to there and all the way along. So we get this sort of zigzaggy look and oh my goodness, there it is. You kind of need to do the stamping first though on this because if I tried to score after stamping, sorry, stamp after scoring, um, you just wouldn't get a nice clean image. So stamp before you score. There it is. And I've lost my horizontal score line. There it is. <laughs> okay. So if I turn it that way around, you should, you may be able to see a little better. But there's nice zigzag lines there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to burnish the straight lines. I'm going to ignore those um, diagonal lines for the moment. Okay, so where your diagonal lines are, that's the top and the rest is the bottom. So I'm going to take a tiny little whisper off the top and take that skinny rectangle away. And then just keep cutting to separate my box like this. Okay. Let's just make it more visible. So just like that. Okay, my whole grip paper's moved. Right, so I'm going to put a little bit of glue along here. So tear and tape works well for this because it's only a quarter of an inch, um, a centimetre. Tear and tape works very well if you're a dry adhesive fan. Because if I hold this up against my hand, you can see it sticks out too much and you just fold it back on itself because obviously it's double-sided and nothing then will stick out. Marvellous. Oh, look, that's perfect. That's going in the bottom. <laughs> okay, so two sides in. I don't think I'm going to put that side in first because you'd see it. <laughs> two sides in and the back. And then we're going to get some glue going on here. So I'm going to use my Seal Plus. And isn't that cute? It's tiny. It's a dinky diddy little box and I love it. And you just poke in side to side like that. And these score lines that I put in before, they're pulling it together and that's how it works. So where's the front? There's the front. <clears throat> and I'm just going to put a hole in the middle of the front and one at the back. Okay, I'm going to get my ribbon. So obviously we use Magenta Madness, so I want to use it again because it's lovely. And I'm going to come in from the back and cut off however much I want, probably far too much. So I've just got in from the back and I'm going to get these two ends, match them up and trim them off to a point and I'm going to feed them through the inside to the out of the front. Okay, so if I tip it that way around hopefully you can see. So that's the back, it's gone over the back and then both parts are coming through to the front together. And when you pull it, it will all pull together I'm going to tie a knot and then tie a bow. If I could actually extract my finger. OK, 
Okay, so there's my knot tied. And now I'm going to tie a bow on the front. And obviously because I've done tone on tone stamping and I've gone pinks here and I did purples on my original, you really can do any colours you want. If you're doing them as favours, match your theme. And I think they're lovely. I think they're so pretty. Very sweet, very simple. They would hold quite a bit. If you're going to do them as wedding favours, five sugared almonds would fit in there, no problem. Anyway, thank you ever so much for joining me. Hope to speak to you very soon. Bye.